Hey, I'm excited, and my name's Super Weta. Hey, excited, I'm Hey, I'm... N name's excited, and I'm my super... Uh. Hey, I'm Weta, and I'm super excited. Invincible got a TV show. Yes, that's right, my favorite comic got an adaptation. Also, um, only like three or four episodes are out by the time I'm making this video, so this is kind of like not a proper review, it's just kind of, hey, you should watch this show as it comes out, not really a, an actual review, maybe I'll make that when the finale is out. I don't know. Anyways, on to the video. If you didn't know, Invincible is an animated series on Amazon Prime based on the comic of the same name. And it began releasing in the early 2000s, around like 2003 pretty much. And I'm a big fan of Invincible, so when I heard that Invincible was getting a show, I got like, super excited. Like, I really enjoyed reading the comic. It was written by Robert Kirkman, who is, of course, famous for writing stuff like The Walking Dead and the less famous but still as good Irredeemable Ant-Man, which is honestly a fun comic which I recommend. And Invincible's amazing art is done by Cory Walker and later Ryan Otley. The art is, like, seriously really good. Like, I might talk about it in a separate video because the art is, like, so good. Did I mention how good the art is? Cause it's good. The series Invincible focuses on a teenager named Mark Grayson. Mark Grayson, not to be confused with Dick Grayson, the DC character who's canonically known for having a dump truck. I'm a truck. Mark is part alien and his dad is Omni-Man, the strongest superhero on Earth. He's got the classic super strength, invulnerability, flight, and super feet. I can't- I can't stop saying super feet! Why do I say super feet? He's got the classic strength, invulnerability, and super speed that's so fast you can circle around the earth before your average GPU is sold out. Goddamn scalpers. The show follows Mark's journey into herodom? Is that a word? I don't know. As his powers finally begin to manifest. And if you couldn't tell, Omni-Man is where Mark got his alien side from. Or is it? I'll try to refrain from talking about spoilers from the comics, but that's the gist of it. Later on, he does meet another team of heroes, and they're some of my favorite characters in the comics. There's Adam Eve, who initially pretty much just shoots lasers, but her real power is a lot cooler. Uh, trust me on this, it's cool. And then there's Duplicate, who who duplicates. <laughs> get, get it? <laughs> it is pretty funny though. In the show, she doesn't do a lot. In fact, she doesn't really get to do much of anything until way later in the comics. So there isn't much to talk about here. So uh, moving on, Rexplode. Good old Rexplode. Yeah, he he's just an asshole. That's that's pretty much his thing. Although in the comics, he's less obnoxious and isn't really used for comedic relief in the same way that he is in the show. Which is something I didn't really like as much since it's kind of annoying. In the comics, he's more of an asshole who just does scummy things and you basically get to watch him get beat up because of the scummy things he does. <laughs> and it's really entertaining. But at the end of the day, the changes don't bother me as much as they should because they really just kept in the parts where he gets beat the fuck up, <laughs> and it's really funny. Oh, look at her, she's adorable. But isn't there like an age requirement for this ride? Am I wrong? This seems weird, right? Guess you missed my tryout. Still think I'm adorable? And then there's also Robot, and he's a team leader. He was one of my favorites in the comics because of how much he evolved as a character. And also his voice actor did a really good job in portraying his sort of awkward moments. Please stop, this is hardly constructive. This show has a surprisingly talented voice cast with like a ton of A-listers. They got J.K. Simmons to play Omni-Man, and honestly it fits. 
I don't see anyone else playing him. He looks like he's about to ask me to take pictures of Spider-Man because they kept the, the mustache and... Yeah, in the comics he does look a lot like J.K. Simmons, honestly. J. Jonah Jameson looking ass. They got Justin Roiland, Seth Rogen, Ezra Miller, Kevin Michael Richardson, Mark Hamill is there out of nowhere, Mahershala Ali as Titan, Clancy Brown as Damien Darkblood the Demon Detective? That's a lot of Ds. And they got Azula's voice actress to play Monster Girl. This is the best timeline, holy shit! Invincible is well known for its handling of plot twists, and one of my favorite plot twists is the one where they reveal that Mark's alien half actually came from Debbie all along? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, one of the main twists of the show is done really well. It's sort of a murder mystery kind of twist, but right from the get-go you know who did the murder, but you aren't told at all why they did it, and it makes a ton of scenes more tense and just a lot more entertaining in general. Because you're always just like, looking for hints as to why person did the thing, he did the crime, he did the bad bad, but why? And one of the biggest advantages of adapting a comic into a TV show is that you get a lot more time to explore the characters. In the comics, Mark had a much smoother transition into a hero, but in the show he has a lot of self-doubt at first, and then he becomes a lot more eager to prove himself, and it's a lot more, you know, realistic in its portrayal of his character. And I really love how they adapted Amber. She has a lot more of a divine... Not divine, defined. Actually, you know what? She's divine. She has a lot more of a defined personality, and she's more kind of like... fun to watch, I guess. So that's cool. Um, another thing they adapted well was the comedy. Holy crap. The funniest part so far was the fight with Doc Seismic. That, that was the... That was a very pleasant addition to the episode. obscene monument they were oppressors racists slave owners you should be on my side we can tear down the old power structure and build a new order i mean look at the costume they've got you in talk about pandering to gender roles i designed my own costume and i thought your doctor was in seismology undergrad in sociology and women's studies i had a minor in african but enough politics! Man, I just... This show's funny. It, it balances a lot of dark stuff with good humor, so... Yeah. Hey, remember that time I said I'd talk about the art in another video? Yeah, well, I lied to you. And you believed me. We truly do live in a society. A lot of the designs were updated for the show, and overall I really like them, since they mainly just improve on the designs from the comics. I really like what they did with War Woman's design, since the original was, uh, a bit weird. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the- f <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> A few nitpicks though. They changed Rex Blow's goggles. I don't like his new goggles. Like, I, I really don't. It's really hard to explain though. They, they just lack the iconic look of the original circular ones. But aside from that, everything else about his design is great. So far the show has done a great job in the superhero costume department. And, and to, to look at how bad it could be, uh, Injustice 2, a, a, a really good example of, uh, of just bad costume design. They tried to go for like a metallic, shiny, techy, leathery look for their designs. But they fell flatter than a, um, the graph thingy showing my uploads in the last month. Haha, <laughs> got him. The Injustice 2 designs suffer from being over-designed. Well, that and just being flat out ugly. Like, wh where am I going with this? I just mostly wanted to clown on the game's designs. Jesus <clears throat> Christ! An example of over-designed costumes that are actually in Invincible is, uh, Immortal. At least when it comes to the comics. There's just 
too much. Like, the random white bands on his arms and legs make him look like a preschooler scrapbook. It's just too many colors. Also, his insignia isn't that defined, so I made a really bad edit to kind of offer a slightly less over-designed version. I kept the gloves because those are cool as all hell, but um, that's one thing the show didn't do. They, they just kind of removed his gloves from the comics. They, they were really cool, and I miss them. Please, give them back. At first, I was really surprised how faithful the show was to the actual comic, and then I found out that Robert Kirkman himself actually had a hand in creating the show. You love to see it. Overall, you should 100% watch this show. It has a lot of potential to be what embodies a great adaptation. It translates the source material accurately, but not so blindly that it's just a retreading of the past. And it also adds a lot more general stuff to the story and its characters without making it unrecognizable. Also, yeah, the animation is really good, so uh, yeah, that's neat. <clears throat> Cut! Okay, that's a wrap. Okay, so was that fine, or do I read over my lines again? I said that's a wrap. I didn't say your lines were good. <laughs>